How's it going everyone? Today I'm going to be doing a Darksaber tutorial based on like settings that I use because I've seen other Darksaber tutorials and uh, they, to me they don't look quite there for me. So I'm going to I'm going to fix that issue. So um, here I have a just a random image from Google of the Darksaber prop. So we're going to edit over top of that. First step is uh, layer, new solid, turn this black, just name this Dark Saber Blade. There we go. Now, turn the eyeball off for a minute so I can actually see the image. What I'm going to do is I'm going to trace a shape around the blade, because that's the part we're editing. There we go. Just kind of tighten it up a little bit, just to fix it up a bit. Alright, so now we got the shape of our blade. Turn the eyeball on. And it covers up basically what I expected. Alright, so now, now that we got the shape all ro basically rotoed in and uh, there, I'm going to duplicate this layer. The layer that's on top, we're going to turn white. You should end up with this. Now go to Effect, Generate, Stroke. Paint, where it says Paint Style, Reveal an Original Image. And then you just mess with the brush settings to however you see fit. So brush size, I go about, eh, since it's a good length away from the uh, the camera, I'm going to go with 9.5. Brush hardness, I'm going to turn that down to about 10. Now, this is just going to be for the shimmer effect, and it's only on this edge. So, we're going to take where it says start, turn it up until it's at just the tip of the emitter. So when you move it up and down, you see this is what it does. Okay, so I'm going to turn it up to just the tip of the emitter. There we go. And again, this is all trial and error with the settings, so you might have to turn the settings up after a while of doing this. Or down. So now we're going to go to effect again. Uh, noise and grain, fractal noise. So now you notice it just went kind of gray. So basically we're going to go into fractal type. Go down to about uh, where it says... I'm going to try subscale. The contrast you're going to want to turn up to 2000. The brightness, you're going to want to turn down to minus 1000. Click the invert button. Overflow option, you're going to turn that to wrap back. So you should have like this weird swirly effect now on the blade. But it's not big enough to me, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my brush stroke settings. Turn the brush size up to about 25. There we go. Alright. You know, see, it looks. The bubbles and everything look a little too big in the fractal settings, so you're going to click the heading where it says transform. 
turn the complexity up to nine. Then we're going to turn scale up until, until it looks relatively right. Sometimes 800 is usually the ma the magic number for this kind of stuff. Yeah, that looks about right. You're gonna, since you're on the first keyframe, you're gonna turn evolutions uh, stopwatch on. And then let's let's just say right here is the end of your clip. It's not going to do anything. So, let's go to the last keyframe of the of the end of the clip, which would be right there. Let's turn the evolution settings up a little bit. As you see, it, it looks like it's kind of shimmery and lit up. So now, depending on how high or low your settings are, you should get this really trippy effect now. So I'm going to turn this up to about yeah, 2. Basically where this first number is. Just turn that up to 2. Cause it All right. Yeah, it's still moving a little slow, so it's, it's just a matter of toggling the number. So let's, let's try. Okay, I'm having some issues with it now. What the heck? Let's try this again. Stopwatch. End of clip. At least I think that's the end of the clip. Yep. And there we go. I'm going to turn this first number up to about 5. It's a bit of a crazy number, but... Okay, now we're talking. So now it's got a, a good flow to the number, to the, uh, the shimmer effect. Which, you know, you could probably turn it up a little bit more still. There we go. Now, it doesn't look quite close to that effect now, so we're gonna go to effect, color correction, brightness, contrast. Now, this is where it gets interesting. I'm going to turn the brightness down to minus 70. Then the contrast you're going to turn all the way up. So now it's got an even sharper effect now. Then you're going to add another brightness and contrast layer. I turn this one with the brightness all the way down and the contrast all the way up. So now you got this, this even sharper look to the uh, shimmer effect, just like how you'd see it in the Mandalorian. And again, it's all just a matter of messing with the different settings in fractal noise. You see soft linear, linear, spleen. I like the look of spleen. And again, I'm just turning down this scaled up and down just to see how it would look. Sometimes even turning the rotation a little bit actually helps adjust it as well. And again, it's only going to affect the area where the blade is. You know, for the glow. This usually helps if you have uh, Video Copilot's Saber plugin, so I'm going to do uh, duplicate the bottom layer, which is the black part of the blade. Now the bottom layer is what I'm going to change. Scroll down into Effects, Video Copilot, Saber. And this is what it's going to look like. Now what you're going to do is open up the Customize Core. Turn this heading where it says Core Type Saber. You're going to turn that to Layer Mask. Now it's only looking at, at basically where the where the roto is. So now, now for the color. 
people usually make the mistake of going straight to white. It's a little too sharp. In the Mandalorian, it's a little off blue. So it's more of like a silver, silver glow with this blade. Now I'm going to turn core settings down, the core size down a bit to one. Turn the bias down to about 25. And the spread down to 20. The glow intensity I'm going to turn up to about 100. Go down to flicker. Flicker I'm going to turn up to 75. And now there's one issue that it's usually pointed out a lot, and that is when the when the blade is there, the people think that the glow goes all the way around. Well, as you see in Star Wars Clone Wars, Star Wars Rebels, and Mandalorian, the white part of the blade actually stops just before the handle. Now, in order to achieve that effect, we're going to go back into the customized core heading. And right where it says start offset, you're going to turn that up just a little bit. Just so that there's a bit of a break in the blade. Where it says mask evolution, you're going to turn that up. And as you see, the break is now traveling down the blade. You're going to want to have it so that the break is at the start of the blade. Where the, where the emitter is. So now I am going to turn the offset just down just a little bit because I'm just trying to get it just right with this spot. I think I'm going to turn it down to three. There we go. There we go. Now, it's still on this dark background. So basically you're going to take the layer itself right here. Right click. Blending mode. Add. Now there is another key thing missing. The only reason why it's yellow here is because the original image has that weird spot. I don't know why. There's one key detail missing, and that is you go with the bottom layer with our glow. You're going to duplicate it, drag it over top of the original black layer, the shimmer layer you're going to switch to add for the blending mode. Now. This looks a little too bright. I'm going to turn the background layer off for now. It looks a little too bright. So now we're going to go to the freshly duplicated saber layer. I'm going to turn the intensity down, down to 75. Core, I'm going to turn up the size. I'm just going to turn up just a little bit. The spread, I'm going to turn down. Now, right where it says alpha mode in the render settings, I'm going to go to mask core. Now it should end up with something like that. Mask glow. Enable masks. Now, it's just a matter of messing with the bias and the size at this point. The size, the bias, the intensity, and the spread it is the biggest pain in the butt that you'll ever deal with on this part. I usually have the spread to about 0 0.03 and the bias down to about 
35 just to get this perfect outline shape and then you're gonna go to mask glow okay so it's a little too obnoxious so I'm gonna turn it turn the bias down to 0 0.20 the spread the spread I'm gonna turn it down to about 0.2 And I should end up with something like this. Now this mode I'm going to turn to screen. Now for the actual black layer, you're not going to turn that to any blend settings because when you, if you do, let's say you put this on add, it actually becomes invisible so you're just gonna leave the black part on normal now you should end up with something like this and it looks like that the shimmer is a little it was a little slow there for some reason so Just gonna drag this up and down the bar just to buffer it up a little bit and so I can give you guys a preview of what it looks like. So after all is said and done, you should end up with something that looks like this. Oops. There we go. Now because it's on a gray background, I'm going to turn this this back layer back down to screen. Just so it's not as obnoxious. Same thing with the other... Oh, well, the other layer is on screen. Oh, okay. There we go. The shimmer you're going to want to have on add, though, because when you put it on screen, it's not as prominent. And I'm going to turn the stroke setting up just a little bit. I'm going to turn it up to 30. Just to kind of give you, give you the idea that it's... And it looks good. There we go. There's the Darksaber effect. And yes, when this is all properly rotated and everything, uh, it looks good in the end. So that's my tutorial on the dark saber effect on how how I do it anyway. I try to get it as screen accurate as I possibly can. Just wish I found an image of this prop, but without the yellow flare there, because that's the only part of this is kind of annoying. Uh, this is my tutorial, and I hope you all enjoyed it, and hope you all found it very helpful. And I will possibly do more of these if needed. And I will see you in the next video. Have a good one, guys.